Hi, Leo Dreger here. I want to talk to you guys about uh, buffer overflows and how you can, one, you know, learn about the basic processes of buffer overflows, but I kind of want to take you past some of the theory and show you some of the hands-on to testing and evaluating buffer overflows. So basically what we're going to do is is look at a stack-based upper uh, buffer overflow that I've written in C programming. So I open up the document here and I just want to kind of, you know, explain this to you so that way you can, you know, follow along and try to reproduce this on your own. This is definitely going to be, you know, like a monkey see, monkey do uh, type of lab. So uh, give me one second here. I'm trying to, you know, resize the uh, um the the text here so uh let's do it starts with it well let, here let's talk about the basics first you basically have the first section here and then the section second the second section down here so the first section is in main um close the or start the parenthesis in argument c comma space character asterisk argument value and whatever that is uh, and parentheses and then bracket so if the argument that's copied is less than two characters basically print a statement you need a value uh, and then exit out otherwise if we do you know pr if it's greater than two characters like 10 characters for example it's going to basically uh, copy that and then basically print a statement you know the value is you know whatever which is actually down uh, listed down here so we're basically supplying a value and then printing that value. And you can see that there is a string copy, uh, the buffer overflow, and then the arguments from the previous up he uh, value up here. All right, we've set the buffer here to 10 characters. Um, and so what we're gonna prove here is, is that when we're going through here, just because we choose something beyond 10 characters doesn't really realistically mean that, you know, the program's gonna crash or bad stuff's gonna happen. Um, in many cases, programs buffer overflow all the time and they work just fine. Um, and so it's only in certain instances where you get a lot of buffer um, overflow that the program actually um, crashes. And so when we compile this and ex execute it, we're going to go through a series of commands. And we're going to use the GDB, uh, for example, and we're going to go through and we're going to look at the um, uh, compiling this in GDB. And you can see actually how this works. And I'll show you some of the variables that you can use to actually see this run. OK, so nonetheless, it's a very, very, very basic program. Clearly, these could be pages long, um, but that's OK. So let's go ahead and open up a terminal. And the first thing we're going to want to do here is basically compile this. And I've already got it compiled, but I'll show you the syntax anyway. So if you want to follow all along, you, you know, you're more than welcome. So what I'm going to do is we'll just do a GCC and the name of our source code, which in this case, mine is stack. Um, uh, stack dot c, and we're going to do this with the ggdb um, compiler uh, switch. And what that does is that allows us to kind of set some of the breakpoints inside of the program, as opposed to actually putting them in the source code, which is actually helpful. Uh, and then you can set your output file to whatever you want to call this. So since I already have this called, you know, stack. Um, uh, dot C, you could do it, you know, whatever, whatever output name you want, whatever you want to execute or refer to those file as. So, um, stack dot C is what I did before, but just to show that this works, I'm going to do, you know, uh, stack one. So if you get an error here, then you can basically see, um, you know, start troubleshooting. So in this case, um, if you look at the print working directory, I'm not actually in the right directory. So let's go ahead and change directories to, uh, in this case, I'm working in desktop. And let's just run the command again because that should be where the name of it is. Um, and it compiles, but it gives us some information. Uh, in function main, warning, incompatible impl implicit declaration of built-in functions, string copy enabled by default. However, it is just a warning, um, so it should still be able to execute just fine. Uh, 
but nonetheless, you know, you would realistically be looking for error messages here. If you get an error message, um, then, you know, things went bad. So for an example, if I take out my end bracket here, uh, in, in this piece here, um, you'll see that it basically will, will error out. Or if I put too many uh, brackets in or something like that, file, um, let's go ahead and save this as uh, stack2. Okay, and then I'll show you basically what an error message is, looks like. So in this case, same exact thing, save this uh, stack2, and let's call this stack2. Boom, there you go. Now we got the error message. Uh, expected declaration or statement of value. Now, uh, most of the time when you're uh, compiling C code or writing C code, 99% uh, of the time it's going to be a syntax error somewhere, an extra declaration, too many, too little. Um, so go ahead and look at syntax and troubleshoot that first. Just because it doesn't work, don't freak out. It's all part of the learning experience. Think of it as like hide and go seek for errors. And that's the way you want to approach this. Uh, don't get frustrated. Don't want to give up. Uh, continue through because this is very much a, a problem solving. All right. So uh, I did it once without an error. Just a couple warnings. And then I created an error just so you can see, you know, what bad syntax looks like if you happen to do this wrong the first time by yourself anyway. All right. So next, let's go ahead. And, and now that we've actually got this um, ran and we got it compiled, let's go into... Uh, GDB and you're gonna want to run this basically like you would any other program so I'm gonna run stack uh, which is the name of my program and you can see uh, copyright information here at the top um, this GDB was configured as uh, i46 Linux um, read more symbols now what one thing to do here is to make things easier for your eyes and to illustrate um, the basically to put this in, in easy syntax so you can actually read it like a human is going to go ahead and set the disability uh, disassembly flavor to Intel and you basically do that by um, declaring set disassembly disassembly dash F and then you can tab your way through for flavor and set it to Intel and it should come back, no problems right there. And then go ahead and you can type list. And list is a helpful command to know when using this because it, it, it'll start showing you basically what your source code looks like. And you can use that, especially when we start getting into, uh, you know, breakpoints and deleting breakpoints and things like that. Uh, because you can test this out by... Um, declaring this now again I want to back up right to what I did in the beginning when it actually compiled this I compiled this with the dash ggdb switch um, that allows me to set the breakpoints uh, breakpoints now that I'm actually inside this program as opposed to having it in the compiled code so I we set the disability flavor then we listed out the 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 contents of the, the source code which we can see here um, but let's go ahead and run this now to run this we basically can basically do a, a, a Perl statement uh, and you can do this by basically typing um, run the program dollar sign uh, bracket uh, or parentheses Perl dot execute single tick uh, print a which is the value that we want to print into the input or copy into our buffers. Um, time is 10, uh, semicolon, single tick, uh, and the, the parentheses, and see what it looks like. And you can see starting the program, the location which we ran the program, uh, dollar sign Perl, basically print A 10 times, and if you count those up, they should be equal to 10. And you can see that it, the program basically accepted that, and fine. Okay, great. Um, so let's, you know, let's basically buffer overflow this. Okay, let's use the value of 11. You can see it ran just fine. Um, now, I'm not going to increment this by 1, so let's do 20. Let's see what happens if we put 20 A's in there. Okay, you can see the program still worked fine. If we do 25, we get a fault. 
Okay, and I'm gonna just gonna auto program some uh, values in here. So if I do like 50, start it from the beginning. Yes, you can see I got a whole bunch of um, well, 50 A's in this point, and you can also see that it's actually stating the memory register here. And we're gonna come back to this in a second. But 414141, this is all A's, um, and you can actually prove that if you were to change it to, for example, B's. Start the program from the beginning, 41.41 4, or 4141 4, 1, and 4242, you know, A, B, if you want to get creative here. And this is, you know, how you learn. This is how you, you learn this stuff. Start it from the beginning again. You can see that it's 4, 3. So, right? If I wanted to see what the value of, you know, 10 is, you know, start from the beginning. Boom, there you go. That's 30, 31, 30, 31, okay, or 1, 0, 1, 0. So we're going to go back to A's just for simplicity. Run it again. Okay, there it works. All right, so now what we're doing is we're basically supplying value to the executable. It's copying it to the buffers, and it's basically buffer overflow. Now, there's not a convenient way to look at what that buffer, what's actually happening to your buffers at this time. So in order to do that, we basically have to look at the buffers. Okay, so let's do an X forward slash um, 20 XW and let's look at the extended stack pointer. Okay, so basically simply doing, uh, asking it to print where it is in the stack. Now this is going to be helpful, and I can change this. If I want to change from 20 to 40 or 400 or whatever I want, um, I can print as much or as little of the buffer as I want. 20 is fine, um, uh, but basically we would be looking directly right in here, right in this section here, because you can see all the 4141414141 right, all the way through here. Right. So if I if I change this, if I go go back to let's go back to print 500 A's to the buffer, start the program from the beginning, have it error out, and then go look at the the buffers. And let's look at the first, you know, well, let's keep it consistent, 500 characters. Um, you can see that now my buffer is all 41414141. So I'm actually proving that the buffers do in fact get overwritten at the different memory locations um, as here on the left, right? So it's nothing but, you know, overflowed buffers at this point. All right, and I hit enter a few times and you can actually see where the hat ends. And then it picks up other values at the end of that, okay? Um, and so what I'm proving here is that the buffers are in fact getting um, uh, overflowed, okay? So let's go ahead and list some things out here. I can, I want to show you guys a couple more things here before we wrap it up. I want to show you how to set breakpoints in here, right? So if we go back to our program, you can see that we've got, uh, and you could do this with the list command earlier, but basically it's right in here. So if you want to look at this uh, right before the, um, uh, the, the the buffer gets copied and check the buffers and check the stack pointers and then let the buffer overflow happen and then check the buffers again and kind of look at that just one line at a time, you can do that. Now, a couple different ways you could do that. You could actually, you know, count the lines down like this. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So it's like right around 9 and 10, okay, is where we want to set breakpoints. Again, this is the value of actually compiling this with doing a dash GGDB, okay, because I can set the breakpoint to 9. And it says breakpoint one set, and then breakpoint ten set. Um, I, you know, I set another one, right? Now, if I run the the code, okay, it'll execute it, and I'm going to change this back to ten. Um, it it'll execute it, but it'll basically break right at the nine and allow you to basically look. So it's ran the program copied the the 10 a's uh and then break here for me to see and then i can look at the uh and i'm only going to look at the 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 first you know 40 of the extended stack pointer so if i look at that here you can see basically the buffers look fine i mean i get all sorts of stuff in here so you know nothing really to see and then if i change this again let's go back to 500 
Um, start from the beginning, yes. Okay, and then look at the values in here. Uh, and we'll just look at the first 40. If I look at the first breakpoint um, after b before the buffer overflow happens, you can. I'm proving that the buffers look absolutely fine. You know, just a bunch of random stuff. I don't see any null operators. I don't see you know your repeated values from the string that I copied, which is why I wanted to do like all A's or all one zeros, or just to make it completely obvious. Uh, or you know null operator zero x nine zero just look at that pattern all the way through it you want to make it obvious when you're learning this so you can actually distinguish what normal buffers look like versus complex buffers um, and then you can go through it and then actually see more what it looks like um, if you want to delete the breakpoints and you know remove them completely you can actually um, just put a um, delete and delete all the breakpoints yes no that'll get those to go away uh, and then you know um, run the command again from the beginning and then check your your registers and then boom there you go buffers are now overflowed so that is the absolute basics to doing a buffer overflow now we haven't looked at you know exactly how this gets exploited you know what's being disclosed what code is being arbitrary executed how is it crashing the system um, what memory is it taking what is task manager or um, top look like right so if I just give you an example here if I'm looking to look at top you know what does that look like and these are all things that you could look at in the grand scheme of things to really understand what your buffers are doing on your system so that's a, a summary um, now just to give you one summary real quick we basically uh, took some buffers copied them printed them we compiled the program using the dash ggdb um, we ran the program gdb space dot forward slash uh, and then the name of your your program we set the um, disassembly flavor to Intel we listed the code we looked at the code we ran a basic Perl statement to basically just supply input to the program uh, we looked at the the different uh, stack pointers uh, I showed you how to change the stack pointers uh, with you know X forward slash you know two zero X W or you know 500 if you want to look at the first 500 um, and things like that. So very, very basic, very, very easy way. Now that you've seen this, the key to actually making this make sense is to go ahead and reproduce this, make your own errors and work through these and get through these on your own. And then you will start having a better understanding of how a buffer overflow works. And then, you know, hey, at the end of the day, if you want to tell your friends and family, you know, hey, I created a buffer overflow. Okay, then you can say you actually did it. But if you cannot do this and you don't know how to do this, well, you know, there are lots of, you know, hackers out there that, you know, do not know how to write a buffer overflow. And I've just clearly proven that it's it's not that hard. Um, so I want you guys to practice. I want you guys to understand this. And, you know, if you have any problems with the video, why don't you um, send me a link on the uh, the contact me section and, uh, you know, I'll answer any questions you have about buffer overflows. My name is Leo Dreger. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Twitter. Also, by now, you should be well familiar with the Cyberry IT website. Be sure that you are sharing, uh, connecting, because that's how you move up in, in the application. Um, use it, learn from it, share it, uh, and take it for all it's worth, because that's why it's here.